Hi there, my name's Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand and welcome to my Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now on this video I'm going to cover uh, basically inspecting uh, front brake discs and front brake pads uh, with a view to replacement, uh, obviously minimum thicknesses and so on. And uh, it's going to be on a 2001 Mazda MPV. Now this is the one with the V6 petrol engine fitted to it. Whatever model that is, I have no idea. Um, big problem though, the vehicle's outside under the carport and it's a little bit windy today. So I'm going to try and keep the work on the car to an absolute minimum for you. Just so you get the basics. Anything we can do in the garage away from the wind, I'll be doing in the garage. Okay, so to the car, let's get the wheel taken off and look at those brakes. Cool, let's go. Okay, so we can see we've got the, uh, the brake disc. The caliper, this is a floating caliper, it's only got pistons on one side, and of course the pad carrier. So let's get the caliper off first and see how badly worn those pads are. Now, these are a 17mm. And you'll notice as we take the slider bolts out on these Mazdas, the top one is longer than the bottom one. Okay, caliper. Well, that's pretty good. If, you, if the caliper comes off nice and easily, it's a good indication we've got excellent piston retraction. Oh, there goes the wind. Okay, brake pads. Right, well, they look pretty thin. I'll be changing those, but I'll show you how to measure them officially when we get back in the workshop. And these anti-rattle shims on the back, we're going to have to reuse those. And it's always a good idea, because they are a bit different sometimes, to remember that this one here, you can tell by the shape there, that's the outer one, where the claw of the caliper makes contact. And that one there, that's the inner. And that's where the two pistons sit. Okay, pad carrier. Now these bolts here are much, much tighter, and these are a 19mm. Now rather than hurt my hand, I used to usually use my magic hammer. Just use the hide end, give it a tap, and never really fails. Oh, they're dry. Okay. Now these should be retained by thread lock. Let's have a look. Hmm, not really much left on there. Okay. Cool. Now, on the pad carrier, we've got these little stainless steel clips. That one's from up there, look, they do fall out. And they're there to reduce the friction and allow the pads to slide freely side to side. And these are pretty dirty and they're a bit bent, so we'll see if we can straighten those out. It's not so good, is it? I'll see that one back in there for now. There we go. In fact, they're pretty worn out, really. There's a few cracks in those. Okay, and brake disc off. There we go. Right, to the workshop. Right, welcome to a wind-free zone. Okay, uh, well, the first thing to determine is do we need to replace the rotors? Now, as a rough guide, before you even do a measurement, as the rotors wear, you get a build-up of a lip here. Now, the lip is because that part of the brake disc, the final outer bit, is not always in contact with the brake pad. So it doesn't wear. So the bigger that lip, the more indication is, the more worn your brake is. But we also need to be able to measure it. You can't just say to your customer, you know, I think your brakes are a bit warm, mate, you need new ones. So we need to be conclusive. Now to do that, we use 
a micrometer. Now, okay, officially the proper micrometer for this particular job will have a point on both of the two anvils. See there, look, the anvils, the, the bits that make contact. I haven't got one. All I've got is a standard micrometer. And this disc is not particularly grooved, so I can still get a pretty good a pretty good reading on there. And I just want to know, is it somewhere near worn out? You know, those surfaces are pretty glazed. Yeah, there's a few grooves on that one, but nothing major. And if you look around the disc, on this one it's on the back, you'll find, if you can see that, you'll find, you'll find, you'll find, you'll find. Can you see that in there, look? It says minimum thickness, and if you turn it around, it then says 26 millimeters. So that tells you that when this disc gets worn down, 26 mil across there, it's worn out. It needs to be changed. Now, to give you an idea, if we measure across, first of all, that lip at the top, that's going to give us a rough idea of what this brake disc was when it was new. But, you know, it's nice to know. Okay, so what have we got on there? Well, doing it with the camera as well, we've got 22 and a half, sorry, not 22, 27 and a half plus almost 0.2. So about 27.7 mil when they're brand new. So they only, they only have to wear down a couple of mil and they're worn out. Okay, so now let's measure across the actual contact surface. This is the part that wears against the brake pad. And let's use the little ratchet thing, do it properly. There we go. And what you're looking for is the narrowest part. You know, there's no point in taking a measurement of the widest bit. Okay, so what have we got without taking it off because there's a lip in the way? We've got, holy moly, 25 and a half and three. So that's 25.8 millimeters. Well, the minimum wear thickness was 26. These shouldn't have got a warrant of fitness the last time the vehicle was checked. But, let's face it, it's actually really hard to, start to tell without taking bits and pieces off, especially the wheel. So, we, need, we know now we need to replace the brake discs. Okay, well when you're fitting new brake discs, you always, always fit new brake pads. But, let me show you how to measure a brake pad um, and how much material is left on there. And to do that, you really, re really, really, really want to use a vernier caliper. Now, if you haven't got one of these, it doesn't matter, you can use a ruler. Because this measurement isn't anywhere near as accurate as doing your brake disc. Now, you'll see on the brake disc itself, you've got the metal backing plate, and then bonded to it normally is the, the material, okay, the actual friction material. And what you're looking for is the thinnest point of that friction material. Now, that brake pad has worn pretty much dead level, which tells us a few things. It tells us that the sliders are good, and it tells us that both pistons and the caliper are working as they should do. They've got even braking force. Now, this brake pad, which is the inner, very, very slightly has got a taper on it. Now, these are both off the same caliper, so this end here is a little bit thicker than this end here. Now, you do get some variation, so it's, I'm not worried about that, and we'll be greasing the sliders anyway. So to check the thickness of that brake material, all you need to do is uh, open your vernier caliper out so you've got a little pointy stick at the end. This is going to be quite hard to, ca to camera, but anyway. And then, basically, you sit the pointy stick on the steel, and with an extra long finger, just lower that down until it touches the friction material, okay? And we've got 3.39, basically 3.4 mil remaining. Now, all manufacturer's specifications tend to vary between, you know, Nissan and Re Renault and Rover and all that kind of stuff. Um, as a rough guide, when we're doing the warrant of fitness, because we don't know every vehicle's spec, we tend to run at about 2 mil thickness left on the friction material. Anything under 2 mil or that appears to be on a 2 mil, it's a fail. Now the problem is, when you're going for a warrant of fitness, is that brake pad on this worn brake disc is sat under that lip, so we lose some of the thickness, and it's hidden by the lip. You see that? So if that went for a warrant, those brake pads would fail. 
because it looks like there's only about two mil or under left on the brake pad. So it'd fail. Even though when you pull it apart, you can say, no, 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 no. There's 3.4 mil left on those. They don't pull stuff apart. Um, also, actually, which is quite interesting, from an inspection perspective, if I can get my little pointy stick, fat screwdriver. From a servicing perspective, and your job as a mechanic is to make sure that this vehicle is good until the next service. I don't know if you're going to see this on the camera or not, but can you see there's some cracks that almost form a full circle, and the same on this side here. I'll tell you what that is. This friction material is glued, bonded to the metal, metal backing plate, but the metal backing plate also has, let me get this sticker off for you, also has um, a couple of la rather large holes in it. Hang on a minute, bear with me. There we go. Okay. So under that um, anti-rattle sticker, which is quite a common thing these days, and it also prevents heat or reduces heat transfer to the piston, you've got these two drillings. And that, that inner circle there, that's friction material that's squished through in like a rivet form on, uh, through those holes on the brake backing plate. Um, and basically, the material has got so thin now that that's starting to break free from the remaining the main sort of pad area. So from a service perspective, no, these pads, yeah, they still work. There's still enough material to do their job. But because we've got this cracking here, that's a major fail. That's an indication that these, what should be one piece, is breaking up. It needs to be changed. But hey, we're fitting new brake discs anyway. Sorry, brake rotors if you're in New Zealand. Um, then we have to fit new brake pads. So, I've shown you how to measure the brake pads, I've shown you how to measure a brake disc, and I've shown you where to find the information on a brake disc as regards minimum thickness. And for minimum thickness on brake pads, if you don't have your man manufacturer specs available, this is for car, two mil. Anything less than that, forget it. Don't put it anywhere near your vehicle. Um, what else have we got to do? Okay, uh, well, let's have a look at the new stuff because I knew it needed new pads in this anyway. Okay, so we've got here brand new brake pads. Now, the ones that came off are TRW, because I fitted these a few years ago. And the ones that are going to go on are TRW. You want to know why I use TRW? Because it's good stuff. Now, on this particular vehicle, all four pads are the same. The inner and the outer pad is the same. And that is what a new brake pad should look like. And you compare that to one of the old ones, it's a fair chunk of material gone. In fact, we can even measure it. So a new brake pad, oh golly, need more fingers. A new brake pad will have, on this particular car, 9.4 one millimeter so 9.4 mil and we're down to 3.4 so one six millimeters has worn off that brake pad it ends up looking like that that was easy wasn't it okay what else have we got to do well we need to check the sliders now we've already taken the pad carrier off that's here and it goes on the vehicle oh, golly more clips like that so that's the top one so that gets the large slider bolt that goes in there. Now, does that feel nice and smooth? Yeah, it's great, actually. And if you're going to add, which I will be doing in a second, uh, some lubricant to that, it needs to be copper paste, not grease. The reason? This thing gets really, really hot when you break it hard, and grease will just turn into a fluid and run away. It won't work. It can also catch fire. Uh, copper paste, far more resilient against heat. So we'll do that. What's the bottom one? In fact, if you look in there, there's still a little bit of copper paste left from sort of two and a half years ago when I serviced this last time. And, yeah, that one's good too. So we'll just put some copper paste on there. We'll give those little clips a little clean up. Uh, one more thing. One more thing. New brake discs. We already have them. Because for once, Andy 
is prepared. So there you go. Brand new brake disc. Pretty cool. Um, and there's a lot of metal there. These are big. These are your vented type. And they, when they come in the box, they're covered in a protective sort of wax, really. It is. It's not grease. It's a wax. And you've got to get it all off. What I use to do that is good old trusty brake cleaner and a clean rag. And you've got to clean it all off before you put the brake disc on the car because if that wax gets into the new brake pads, they can squeak, it can act as a lubricant, they're not going to work as well. Pants. Good Yorkshire term. So let's get that cleaned off now and then we can go outside and fit all these new parts to the truck. Right, bit of brake cleaner. Try not to splash the camera, it probably won't like cameras. Nice clean rag. And you can see actually coming this there's the dirt, but there's the waxy stuff coming off. And the good thing about brake cleaner is it evaporates away, so it leaves no residue whatsoever. If you get any real stubborn marks like that, it's always best to get it off. Just a bit of emery cloth is fine. Just don't go mad, don't eat into, eat into the disc too much. So that's that side done. I've got a bit of wet and dry, see if that'll work. These must have been in stock for a while by the looks of it. I feel cheated. Okay. That basically is what happens to them when there's no wax on them. Okay, the other side. Now, I've been working with oil today, so I'll just put a put a rag down. We'll get another one. Now you don't need to worry too much about the centre boss because that doesn't contact the discs. Okay, so that brake disc is now ready to go on the vehicle. Okay, we've got a couple more things that we can do in the garage away from the wind. One of those is we can add some more copper paste onto the slider bolts. And you should have some of this. It lasts for quite a while, you don't need very much. And all you need to do, and you'll see there's a, usually on these there's a little flat groove and that's, that acts as a reservoir for the copper paste. And you don't need lots. And I mean, officially, where the threads are, we should have thread lock on the threads. But I'll put that on when we get back outside and we start to assemble it. So that's, there we go, look, that's better. Now obviously when you're putting thread lock on the threads, they've got to be clear, clean of any kind of grease and oil. There's no point in putting thread lock on something that's got uh, copper paste on. Okay. There we go, look. Put a little bit of a clump where that groove is. That should last another two and a half years now. Okay, perfect. Nice and smooth, working really well. Uh, what else have we got to do? Well, the two retaining bolts that hold the pad carrier to the knuckle joint, we need to use some thread lock. This is Loctite, what is it? 263, this is sort of the permanent stuff. Yeah, what's it say? Thread locker. High strength, my favourite. Okay, now again, we don't need to put lots on there. That will do. Okay, don't go mad. As you uh, as you wind them in, obviously it'll thread. It'll end up across all the threads. And again, it appears whoever had this off last didn't put thread lock on, and it wasn't me because I I only replaced the pads. So, uh, yeah, it wasn't me. <laughs> Okay, um, also what else can we do? Well we can do some more actually. Um, we've got the brake pads. Now they're both the same and what you should do is we've got one of the anti-rattle shims here. Now these need to go back on again, don't miss them out and they go back on like that. But before we put them on you should put a very thin smear of copper paste on the back there. What that does is it helps to glue everything together 
Now this isn't on the friction material by the way, this is on the back of the brake pad and it has to be a thin layer. You, the last thing you want is risk this kind of stuff getting on your, on your friction material. But it helps to glue this to the pad and that prevents things like rattles um, happening. Now what I'll also do is just bend those little clips actually because they're a bit they're a bit weak, they're not really clamping onto the onto the pad that well. Just be careful not to snap them off. You don't want to do that. But we need that just to stay in place really whilst we're assembling it to be honest. Okay. And when you deal with copper paste, try and keep your fingers clean. You don't want to be getting copper paste um, all over the friction material, or actually anywhere near the friction material, because it's very bad, really bad. Okay, and then we've now got the outer pad, and that's the, the outer anti-rattle shim. And again, we can just put a, a thin layer of copper paste behind those. Now, it does vary from vehicle to vehicle. And uh, we don't always put copper paste on the back of brake pads on motorcycles for some reason. Uh, some mechanics don't. I usually do. But I think, again, it depends how hot the brakes can get. Um, you know, if it's a big, big race bike, those brakes can get really, really hot. And you don't want to risk that melting and end up on the disc. Okay, so same again. I've just tweaked the little brackets and it's going to sit on there like that, all good. Now, again, copper paste, more copper paste, never ends. You've got on the back here, this is where the fingers of the caliper make contact with that shim. And at those points, we put a little thin smear of copper paste. There we are, look, see, just a little, just a line, basically, don't go mad. You'll see me do this in a few of the other brakes videos as well. So that's now ready for installation. Well, it's not actually. We've got more. Jeez. Okay, well that pad, when it's mounted on the pad carrier, these little lugs here slide up and down these grooves. Now, okay, there's a, there's a clip missing, but within these little grooves, they slide up and down. So when you release the brakes and the pistons retract back into the caliper because of the main square section seal, those pads want to be free, relatively free, to move away from the brake disc. Otherwise they're going to continue to rub on the brake disc and, uh, and wear down and make noise and that kind of stuff. So you need to make sure that all these grooves here that are the contact points with the ends of the pads, that they're all nice and clean. And I always put the copper paste just on the end of the pad just on this bit here look okay so just on the contact points which is there and there I'll put it on there look as well there we are, look. so like that okay that's that's un not copper pasted copper pasted there we are look yes I should have shares in copper paste but no really this pot that I'm using now I think I must have used about two of those in the last seven years so you really don't use very much at all. There you go, look, that's the other end done now. And we can do this one. So on the ends, and again, you've got to stay away from that friction material. You don't want it on there. To camera, to camera, to camera, okay. On there, look, okay. Done, okay. And lastly, on the back of the inner pad, you can see on that anti-rattle shim where the pistons make contact. Now the pistons are hollow, so there's no point in putting copper paste all over the middle of it. You only need copper paste where it actually makes contact with the pistons. So you can even just do a little circle. You know, it's you don't want to have too much on there. But believe me, doing this kind of stuff can help prevent your customer coming back saying, hey mate, you know when you fitted those brakes last week? Man, they squeak like mad now. Don't want that. Don't like stuff coming back. You know, and if another mechanic works on this in the future, he's gonna see all this and he's gonna go, whoa, that lad knew what he was doing. There you go, look, how's that? Almost a smiley face. Okay. So we're now about ready, I think, pretty much, to go outside and assemble the driver's side front brake with a new brake disc and new brake pads. 
Um, before we push the pistons back into the caliper, I'm just going to get my little flat screwdriver and just pry back the dust seal and make sure those pistons are not corroded because if they are, we can't push them back into the caliper because if we do, they're going to maybe damage the main seal and they're also going to bind in the caliper body. So we're not going to get piston retraction. The pistons are basically going to be sort of semi-seized, if not seized, in the caliper body and we would need to strip that caliper down uh, and clean everything up, put it back together and maybe replace the seals, who knows? And all that's covered in a different video. Not for this particular car, but brake videos for quad bikes and Yamaha Vikings, that kind of thing. Okay, so we won't worry about that today, but I'll pull the seals back just to double check, and then we'll get this thing reassembled. See you outside. Okay, so first bit is to put the brake disc on. And you can, if you really want, put a bit of copper paste on the back of here uh, against the hub. Don't think you need that today. So that can go on there like that, and then I'll whiz and get the, uh, the pad carrier. Oh, all clips, come back. Okay. So we can pop the bolts in there already. Got the uh, thread lock on there. Slide the pad carry into place. Align the threads for the top one I always find best. There we go, look, that's now started. Let's get the bottom one in. Now, with hindsight, I think I should have got a new set of clips for these brake pads as well. These are pretty badly worn and a bit twisted too. But uh, unfortunately, it's not going to happen. I think that wind's died down a bit. That's good. Okay. So I'm just going to remove the slider pins. They're already pre-copper pasted. We've done that already in the workshop. Take those out. Large one to the top, small one to the bottom. And now we can tighten up these bolts. But I'm going to go with 80 for now, which I think is about right. Holy moly. Tell you what, it's still a bit higher than that. Let's do 100. 100 Newton meters. Because that didn't feel tight enough. Okay, so I've done those at 100 newton meters. There we go. Okay, so the pad carrier is now on, the disc is in place. The next job, like I said earlier on, is just to inspect the condition of the pistons. Well, I'll get my little flat screwdriver, which is just here. And we're just gonna, I don't want to get any dirt under there. I do need to have a look at the condition of those pistons before I push them back in. That's really, really important. Now this is only the dust seal. Oh, that looks fine. Yeah, that's really clean. Okay, let's make sure it seats properly again. Yeah. This one. Yeah, that's all right. No signs of any corrosion whatsoever. Now, maybe, just maybe, I can push these in with my hand. Should be able to, really. There you go. Look. Now, if you're doing one at a time like this, just be sure that the other one doesn't pop out on you. So it does, you're going to have to bleed the whole system. Okay, so we can get this one in. Now, just do it nice and slowly, otherwise it will push the other piston out. All we're doing is pushing the fluid back up to the master cylinder. Now, if these are too hard to push in, then you can use a little G-clamp or a large pair of pliers, big pipe pliers. But the harder they are to push in, the more of an indication that there's corrosion and stuff going on in there. They should be relatively easy to push back in. There we go. Okay, excellent. That was a good test, wasn't it? Right, next job, let's get the pads put in. Okay, let's make sure all these little clips are in place. Sorry about the wind. Oh man. It wasn't windy a minute ago. Okay. 
Right, they're all in. Now this is the outer pad. Just pop that in there. Stay. Little clip. Please. There we go. Okay, that's the outer pad in. And now for the inner pad. There we go. Okay, one, two, perfect. Okay, let's push those together. Great job. Okay, now for Mr. Caliper. Now it should go over those pads nice and easy with the pistons pushed back. Should be no issues there. And just make sure you're not squashing those gaiters because you need to thread through those. Right, large pin for the top. That'll do. And small pin for the bottom. Now, just before I thread those all the way in, I'm just going to get a bit of a rag and just clean off those threads and drop some uh, thread lock on there. Now I've put a bit of brake cleaner on this rag and that helps a lot to get rid of that uh, any grease on there. There we go. Okay. So a bit of thread lock just on those bolts. And now we can thread them in. So it's copper paste on the sliding part and thread lock on the actual threads. And when you when you get the new bolts, if you buy new bolts for these, they come with a thread lock already already applied. Okay, now again there'll be a torque setting for these. Okay, so everything's assembled. The last thing to do before we switch to the other side is to pump up the brakes, make sure those pistons are all the way, all the way out, and then we can refit the wheel. And before we refit the wheel, we'll just give the, the rotor a bit of a turn and make sure that the brakes aren't binding. Get that wheel put on. So there you go, Mazda MPV 2001 front brakes to do. Um, I'm going to do one side to camera, other side is exactly the same, just a mirror image basically. Um, fitting brake pads, if you want to do it really quickly, it's a five minute job. That's not the right way to do it. You know, you've got to check those pistons for condition before you push them back in. Go check the brake disc. How worn is it? Does that need to be replaced at the same time? And you've got things to torque up. You've got thread lock to put in certain places on threads. You've got copper paste to put on the sliders. It's, you're not just fitting the components, you're servicing that brake component as a whole. You're making sure that it's going to work properly. Because 
If you just take the brake pads out and chuck new ones in, forcing the pistons back into the caliper with a big G-clamp, then you're probably, you know, not fixing the problem. Then there might well be a problem under there, hiding, that's caused those brake pads to wear out really quick, or maybe that's the reason why the car came into the workshop to start off with, that there was, it was pulling to one side or something. So there you go. Um, that is the last of my... Uh, breaks videos for a while because I'm going to be focusing on all the checks on the RAV4 engine, all the measurement checks on the head. So I'm going to crack on with that this afternoon as soon as I've finished that Mazda because it's going to go back to the customer tonight. So I hope you found that uh, video helpful. If you've got any questions or comments then do please leave them down at the bottom. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, then of course you'll be getting free notifications as and when there's any new videos uploaded to the channel, and there's usually four or five a week. And over the next seven days, there's going to be about 20, 25 videos going up there. So it's, I'm really, really busy doing this at the moment. Um, yeah, so it's great to have you along, and um, you know, if you've got any comments, just leave them behind, and I'll get back to you. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Cheers, over and out.